everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. Woo. Woo. So today I'm excited because we are trying my mom's Tattori Tang mm. recipe. I don't know why I say it's so weird. I feel like I gotta go Tattori Tang. It's a it's called Tattori Tang, which is essentially this Korean dish filled with spicy red pepper paste. It's almost like this sweet. Spicy deliciousness with chicken drumsticks. Mm. Green onions are like such a huge part of the recipe. We have onions, potatoes, jalapenos, carrots. Everything delicious is going inside. So with that being said, summer is just around the corner. Would I say that this is a that girl summer meal? Would I say that this is a meal that you eat right before you get in a bikini? Absolutely not. You know, I've been on TikTok, I've been looking around the internet, and everybody's saying for summer, you need to get on some green juices. You need to go to some Pilates class, okay? Which is why I feel like you need to get fetch. Here's how it works, right? You want some extra cash laying around to do these other things, buy some skincare, splurge on some things once in a while, fetch, is gonna work for you and it's free. Fetch Rewards is a super easy to use free app where you earn free rewards on literally anything that you buy. You can just scan any physical receipt that you have or even like an e-receipt and you will earn points no matter where you shop or what you buy. When I say anywhere, I mean, you could have bought skincare online. You could have gone and bought groceries like onions and green onions and everything you need for this recipe. You could buy bikinis for the summer, e-receipts for new towels on Amazon, from restaurants that you eat at, literally any receipt you can scan on Fetch. And once you scan your receipt or your e-receipt, you rack up points for free. You can actually redeem these points for hundreds of rewards. Like I've gotten Amazon gift cards, Visa gift cards, but there's a lot more on Fetch that you can redeem. I just can't see why you wouldn't use it. Like I straight up tell everyone, hey, you got like five minutes laying around, go sweep your house, find every single receipt that you have. I know you have a junk drawer, go get fish out those receipts. And then just use Fetch using my link and scan away. The process of scanning a receipt it takes seconds. It's so simple. So make sure to use the link in the description and use code BISS, B I S S, and get 3,000 points when you scan your very first receipt. Download the app now. That's use code BISS to get 3,000 points when you scan your first receipt. This is a limited time offer for you guys, so make sure to get Fetch. Buy ice cream, splurge on some new skincare, get those rewards. And thank you, Fetch, for sponsoring today's video. And let's get into the doctor tongue. I got the I got the chicken, the raw chicken back here because I didn't think that you'd be wanting to <laughs> stare at the... Okay, you know what? Let's go. For the people that want to look at some raw chicken. Oof. Do you wash your chicken or not? We just had a huge debate about this upstairs with my mom. People wash the chicken because, you know, you really think that the chicken butcher is washing your chicken before they put it in those plastic packagings? Absolutely not. So you wash it to get rid of the bacteria. But let's say you do get rid of the bacteria. What also happens, these are the camp that don't wash it. They say as you wash the chicken, that bacteria, that salmonella, is just splashing all over. Cause you know, have you ever tried washing a chicken? It's not just a stream of water <laughs> flowing through. But you it, can it, just wipe down the counter. The entire sink and the counter. Exactly. And the faucet, yes. Exactly. But who's gonna realistically do that? Honestly, a lot of people, like my mom. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut some onions. He's gonna cut some green onions. So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to cut some half of the green onions into little pieces for garnish. The other ones do like one to two inch pieces. Do you guys believe in time travel? I think I do. Okay, explain why. You believe why. in time travel? Yeah. Can you explain your theory, please. If we have the technology to like go in a speed of light, yes. or even speed of sound, yeah, you can time travel. I think we can time travel. But um, because time is so. But do we don't have the technology, do we? So eventually, I think it is possible. Eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what they said though, is if your body was traveling at the speed of light or faster, which is what you would need to time travel, mm -hmm. you would implode and die. So they're saying it's really fatal. So it's not about just finding the technology and creating the technology to go back in time, but how would you, your human existence, I mean, we get freaking colds. We get, <laughs> we get sick all the time. How can you withstand traveling faster than the speed of light? But the question is, yes. like, I guess, like, do you mm -hmm. believe there are time travelers living oh. with us? Oh. Like, do you think there's someone's like, I came from the future? Do you know what I'm talking about? I think The Simpsons is like, 
Ah. The liter like the time Simpsons. travel. What? I don't get it. What's the Simpsons? Because they predicted they everything. They predicted so many things. So we're talking about time travel. Here's the thing. I, time travel is one of those things where I think I know something, and then I read something else, and then I realize I don't know anything at all, and then I keep going back and forth. There's a lot of fascinating paradoxes. So we've got three giant onions. Just cut them in half. This is what my mom said. So don't come for me unless you want to fight a Korean woman right now. So we're putting in like three potatoes, just halved. Okay, and then. So everything's like in giant chunks. Yeah. It's actually good for you. Takdoritang. Have you seen this bowl of sauce? Bro, takdoritang is over? not good for you. Are you kidding me? Then there's the type that eats a French fry and say, oh my god, I just had some <laughs> potato today. Takdoritang is what my mom makes when she's like, let's let's like not lazy? eat ramen, but let's eat something bad. Oh. <laughs> let's eat something worse. Yeah, <laughs> let's eat something nasty. <laughs> What is he doing? <laughs> mm. This is for garnish. Then when I say one to two inches, if that's what you think is one to two inches, I don't want to know. How are you going to get rid of these? The best part. You like those? That's the flavors. I hate those. Like there's no flavor to it. That's all the, these green things don't have the flavor. Now we've covered the raw chicken with the potatoes, the onions, the carrots, and this is my mom's secret takdori tang sauce. She said that I would have to pay her a very handsome fee in order for me to expose it on camera and give it to the world for free. So I'm just kidding. I think it's a mixture of, and I think the recipe is really easy. She said it's a mixture of spicy red pepper paste. We've got some gochugaru, which is the red pepper flakes. We've got a bunch of um, soy sauce. Maybe some sesame oil. Those are the ingredients of the Koreans, okay? And I can say that I'm Korean. So we're just gonna put the sauce in. She told me no water unless you hear or smell something burn. So it's just straight <laughs> sauce. I don't know how to feel about this. If it catches on fire, make sure you pour water. Exactly. Yes. Okay, anyways, if you guys were able to time travel, would you do it? Yes. I mean, it's not gonna be of a course. thing where are you, you think so. Me? You wouldn't do it? To when? When would you time travel? Past or to? future? I'm assuming you can go either way. But which one would you choose? I would go to the past. I mean, the future is happening. I mean, what can you do when you go to the future? I guess Nothing. I guess you can see which companies okay. are doing well, come That's back true. and invest in those companies. That's true. That's I'm true. trying to explain it in a way that I know my fiance is going to resonate with. And well, that, is, that is pretty good too. Or you could see which, what are the lottery winning numbers. But oh. travel to the past is hard too because you're changing your life. Exactly. Have you yeah. guys heard of the grandfather paradox? Oh, this one no. is fascinating. Okay, I'm sorry. This is like a tangent. I'm talking about people who claim that they're from the future. But this grandfather time travel paradox is something that blows my mind every time I think about it. Essentially, the theory is that if you were able to get into some sort of spacecraft, some sort of machine that can travel faster than the speed of light, the first obstacle that you would have to overcome is whenever you land, wherever you land, it's probably gonna kill people because the amount of radiation it would cause is out of this world. So you're gonna kill a couple people here and there. How does that affect your history? We don't know. Now let's say you find out exactly 100 years ago your grandfather, your great grandfather that you've never met, it's actually just your grandfather, that you've never met before is alive and young. And you wanna just have one conversation with him when he was young. You've heard so many things about him. So you time travel to the exact coordinates and boom, <laughs> your machine lands on him. You kill your grandpa. Now here's what happens. You kill your grandpa. Mm -hmm. So you just changed history and you don't exist anymore because your grandpa never met your grandma, your grandma never had your dad, your dad never met your mom, and you never existed, but you came into the past to kill him. So how does that even work? Yeah, it's so the grandfather paradox. So that means a lot of physicists, they huh. claim that you're at that moment when you kill your grandfather. You disappear? No. Oh. It's split into a parallel universe. Oh, Ooh. parallel universe. That, still, it's I don't like get Avengers. it. like Avengers. Yeah, <laughs> like you Avengers. split the universe. Some people say they believe in the cause and effect something, which is essentially um, you cannot kill your grandpa. It's like the law of whatever. That forbids you yeah. from killing your you grandpa. Can, like you could have a gun and point it at your grandpa, and this is a perfectly working gun, but when you try to shoot your grandpa, it Ooh, won't jam. shoot. But Ooh. you look at some rando, you can shoot them in the past, but you cannot shoot your grandpa because it messes with the cause and effect of then you can no longer be alive, which means yeah. you can no longer time travel yes. to kill him. Yes, exactly. That means time, th does, wouldn't that mean the time travel nev will never happen? You can never time travel? Yeah. So that's why you can't kill your grandpa. Or it, the, the uh, parallel universe does exist. Yeah. 
Because there's no way you can kill your grandpa and still be alive and came back and kill him. Precisely. True. Yeah, it's really weird. There's a, actually a lot of time travel par paradoxes, which I find what? fascinating. There's one so called confusing. the predestination paradox, What's which that? it essentially means you time travel. You fall in love with a woman. I feel like this was a Captain America storyline at one point. <laughs> you fall in love with a woman, right? You get married and you have a kid, but that kid is you. What? That kid is you, How? and you later time travel, There's meet a, a woman, and you fall in love with her, and you have a kid, and that kid is you, and then that kid time travels, and then you meet a woman that's your so wife, you but your mom. So you keep giving birth to yourself, bro. But how can you make the exact same baby with, even if it's so your mom? That's why people are saying it's predestination paradox or something, where the genetics are unknown. It's really confusing. Like it's you and your wife, but it's also you. So it's like a weird paradox of what <laughs> it's happens. So confusing. Yeah, it's really confusing, but it's so fascinating. That is. I swear. Like, I really don't understand the science behind anything, but time travel paradoxes are one that I find fascinating. Now, would I say that I know a lot about it or I understand it? No. But just the ideas are so fascinating. Listen, I think you lied to me when you told me you cook at home. I don't cook like this. I'm talking about like some fried rice and stuff, you know? He talks about microwave. <laughs> yeah. Microwave? <laughs> he only microwave. Microwave, I tell you. So if you could time travel, what would you do? Go back to 20. I think we all do the same thing. 13, 2011. And buy Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be paranoid about time travel. Now, I'm not here to say that I would not time travel and buy Bitcoin when it was like a dollar. I would. Okay, I would get the lottery, I'd buy Ethereum, do all that. Bullshit that everyone's online about, okay? But my paranoia stems from the fact that I feel like time travel is a bitch. Like, you're gonna do this and your life is gonna be miserable. Like, it's gonna come and bite you in the ass. Like, you're gonna think that you're gonna be this loaded person just buying all these, like, I'm gonna eat all the best duck dory tongue in the world. But you're gonna be lonely. Everyone's gonna freaking hate you for some reason. You're gonna have nobody to share this with. Your mom is dead. Dead. Everybody's dead. Everybody that loved you is dead because of you. Like, I feel like that's how it's gonna happen. More sauce. That yeah. went really dark. Yeah, I feel like that's how it's gonna happen. But anyways, let's talk about people who have time traveled. No way. In the depths of Japanese Twitter, a very mysterious account, something quite curious indeed happened. A mysterious account, and it, it was a, it wasn't a celebrity, because this account blew up. It wasn't a celebrity, it wasn't a freaking um crazy drama account, it was a nameless account. This nameless freaking account by the name of at YJ9436363 on January 3rd, 2018, they tweeted, I am a man from the future, from the year 2075. If you have anything you want to ask me about the future, just ask. Mm. To the extent of which I can answer, I will. Now, I mean, of course, at first, not a lot of people found out. But the ones that they did, they were intrigued. I mean, they're not taking this guy seriously. He doesn't even have a profile picture. This is typically a troll account. At first, everyone thought it was comical. Oh yeah, let's see this idiot put on a show for us. Let's see him get these little, get these little hints wrong. So at first, everybody asks questions, the basic ones. But let's say someone time travels. Oh, here's a question. Let's say someone time travels. Now, I know if someone time travels from 10 years or even 50 years, you're gonna ask them what happens to you. I think it's too big of a too big of a chance thing for you not to ask. But what if they don't even know you? No, what if they do? What if they have all oh, the answers? Okay. They know who you married. They know how well you're doing. They mm. know what house you live in. They know everything. They know how well your kids are doing. They know if someone in your family died. You can ask them anything. 10, 50 years, I think most of us would ask. But what if that person has time traveled two years? Would you still ask? Or since it's a short period of time, you would yeah. still want to experience life yourself? Sure, of course. I'll ask that way, yeah. Mm, fascinating. <laughs> okay. Okay, anyways, back to the questions. A netizen asked this Japanese Twitter user, does Japan still exist in 2075? I mean, who knows what happens in the next 60 years, right? So he responded with, yes, it's still there, but the capital is no longer Tokyo. It will be Okayama. And this caused a stir online because people were like, wait a minute, did Tokyo fall down in a catastrophe, like an earthquake? Was Tokyo flooded maybe by the sea? This is fascinating. There are even references in Japanese history books that stated that Okayama would be a suitable capital for Japan. But again, I mean, it's such a random lie. Like maybe he's lying. Ask him another one. Which manufacturer or brand 
made the time machine that you're sitting on right now. And he said, he said Tesla. I'm just kidding. No. I knew you were going to be, I knew I was he was going to go so, all, I don't know. No, okay. He said, even in 2075, time machines are not commonly known. The time machine is a secret lab production that he was on the project to work in. And he actually started long time ago. Now he's returned to 2018. He will be returning back to 2075 when he's done with his work here. He said, I've traveled to other, t other time periods before as well. Okay, well then prove it. Hmm. What's gonna happen in 2018? Well, the first big thing will probably be a satellite falling to Earth. I mean, so many people, I would say majority of people were skeptical, like what? That's so dumb, why would a satellite fall back to Earth? I mean, it's probably like a 13 year old kid or maybe some weird 20 something year old who has a desperate need for attention online and validation. I mean, it, this is weird. But in April 2018, something wild happened. Tiango one fell to Earth. The satellite fell to fucking Earth. And now people are like, holy shit, this is getting freaking weird. So now he's gaining Twitter followers. YJ at one point had like a tune of 80,000 Twitter followers, probably more. But the only person that he followed was NASA. Mm. So it's like, <sighs> is NASA the brand of your spaceship or your little fucking time map travel machine? So now the netizens, they start asking away even more. But obviously it feels a tiny bit realer. Like, I'm, I'm not saying it's real, but they're, they're more nervous now. A tiny bit more serious. A netizen chimed in. Are there gonna be any books anymore? Like, do we still have manga in the future? It's Actually, better. it's all ebooks. Paper is going to be a scarce resource. Huh. So he's, what? What else is gonna happen? He said that we'll be able to communicate with dead people for the first time in 2031. That's like 10 years from, yes. that's less than 10 years. Which is interesting because another man named 2062 said the same thing. Who is okay, that other man? 2062 is actually his nickname and he claimed to have come from the future from the year 2062. And he's probably the most famous time travel future man in all of Japan. He predicted two earthquakes. There's accurately. a lot of uh, future men, huh? In, yeah. In Japan. So I would say that the time travel machine is probably manufactured in Japan. <laughs> I feel like they were the first ones on that, you know? <laughs> we were too busy making TikToks. I, I want to ask more questions that I can That's what I'm more, more in depth. No, like, yeah. tell me more things that happened in 2018. So I can for sure know you're exactly. from the future. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like Instead I don't want you to know. be lucky. Mm -hmm. I need to make make sure of that first. Oh, 2062 predicted two earthquakes accurately. So a little bit about Mr. 2062. He's different from YJ because YJ, he made a Twitter. He was tweeting all these days, but this guy, Mr. 2062, he just appeared for a few days out of nowhere and posted a very short thread on this big Japanese forum. So I would say maybe like Reddit. And then he vanished again. And then he would pop up and then he would vanish and then he would pop up. So at first he appeared and he said, this is his whole little spiel. I am from the year 2062. I know you won't believe me, but you are in grave danger. And I need to inform you of something important. I hope you'll be prepared for it and he released a strange cryptic code that later translated into climb up the mountain. People thought it was strange, like what mountain? Are you talking about fucking Mount Everest? Like what are, what are we supposed to be climbing? Mm -hmm. Mount Fuji? Fuji? What, what do you want? That was November of 2010. A few months later, March 11th, 2011, have you guys heard of the 311 earthquake? And it happened and a tsunami came afterwards. When things settled down, a few netizens started to put two and two together because when there's a tsunami, what do you do? Go to the highest point. Climb oh the mountain? God. Is that why he told us to climb the mountain because a tsunami was coming? So then he comes back and he lets everyone know that April 2016, he has to warn them of something. And they're like, what? Another earthquake? Wait, on, he said on April 26th? 2016. In 2016. Oh, in April of 2016, something have, is about to happen. You guys have to be careful. But that's a whole month. He should have yeah. given us a date. Exactly. And then we'll be like, okay. Right. But look, if I say April April 2016, something's gonna happen. Yeah, there's something's gonna happen that month. But you can still forget, because it's from the year 2016. Too. But no, then you have Google. But I'm saying what um, I'm saying is like you 
there's so many random things could happen. Like I farted this morning. Is that what you're talking about? See, this is why I don't believe time travelers, right? So I, maybe you could argue that they don't want to impact that many lives. Maybe if they tell you it's an earthquake, then they save too many lives, which you would think is a good thing, but maybe it impacts history and maybe it impacts the future in a way that is they can't even control and they don't even want to mess with. But I think that's messed up, right? If you're gonna go and warn people, yeah. the best effective way to do it is tell them what the f to be warned about, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's to be like, hey, can you not be in this city on that day? Cause it's about to go down. Can we check? Whoa. Okay. Ooh, it's looking better. That's beautiful. It smells so good. After leaving this message that something big is gonna happen mm -hmm. in April, he vanishes. April 14th, 2016, the Kumamoto earthquake hits. And everyone is like, oh my God, holy sh this guy has correctly predicted two separate earthquakes. So some people start speculating that he's some sort of earthquake specialist. They're actually called like seismologists. So maybe that's what he is. Maybe he's not from a guy from the future. I mean, think about it, right? He knew if he came out outright and said, Hi, I'm a seismologist. Ask me anything. Firstly, it probably wouldn't get attention. Like the movie Don't Look Up. Think about like how many global warming experts have come out and it's like, Hey, this is a thing. And we're just like, hee ha, okay, cool, thanks. Or we're like scared for a day. It probably wouldn't even get attention. So his post of, hi, I'm a seismologist or a seismologist is not gonna work. So he thought this would be a better way to get people's attention. And maybe that's why he didn't even get a precise date. So typically, it, being an earthquake expert, I mean, how long have they been saying the big one is coming in LA? For so long. You kind of know where it might hit. You kind of know you're expecting it or it's overdue, but you don't exactly know the day, you don't know any of these things. He's Maybe he's also worried that if he gets it wrong, he would publicly get bullied. Think about it, people would assume that he's you know, not good at his job, or they would say that he's fear-mongering, or maybe he works for the government to distract us. We live in a world of conspiracy theories. So he posed to someone from the future since it would intrigue people. They would listen more to this anonymous man from the future than an actual real-life expert. Which also, what does that say about us, you know what I mean? I can't imagine that though, because they still cannot predict that closely. Like they can't yeah. predict it down to the month. They can just estimate. Mm -hmm. So maybe this guy is from the future. Let's entertain the idea. Here's what he said happens in the future. Someone asked, what's something that you can eat in the future? And he says, seafood. Fish and shrimp are not going to be eaten in the future because of nuclear contamination of the oceans yeah so that's why all the sea creatures all the sea animals they become inedible in yeah. 2062 who is the leader of china and china. he said china's gone what okay now he that's said, getting political <laughs> most of asia most of asia is gone and they've become part of india it's very like uh-huh wow. he also claimed other things too such as there will be another world war by 2031 he said that is the same year humans will be able to communicate with the dead what so in japan we have mr 2075 and we also have mr 2062 both of them have accurately predicted a few things i mean what are your thoughts on these guys do you think it's just luck probability Maybe they're taking intelligent you know, but educated is, guesses. Yeah, so far I'm not really convinced. Are you? Are you guys convinced? China gone in nine years? No, I'm, not even that. It's just the fact that they, they haven't proved enough to yeah. show that they are from the future. I think it's pretty pretty easy to say something's gonna happen in this month. Give something that's like mathematically way more challenging to prove. Like, like the exact the chance date, of, yeah, the exact time. The chance time. of you getting this right yes. is 1 in 10 million, because for example. Because something's gonna happen in April. I mean, it happens every month exactly. internationally. Exactly. So, I don't and know. And Japan does have a lot of earthquake in comparison. It's like yes. that 2012 thing. Like, world's gonna end. Yeah, that one was weird. But yeah, what the end. hell happened there? Yeah, I, I think know. there was some sort of calendar that people went by, and oh, then they yeah. calculated it, and the world was gonna end. And really were, you guys, were, were, yeah. were you guys, did you guys think for a second? I or? didn't think the world was gonna end, but tell me why. I was kind of excited if it did. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know what? I wouldn't even be mad about it. I, I think guess we I all, was... I think we all were hoping yeah. something's gonna happen. That was Facebook back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Like, everyone's posting the there was same a movie. video. There mm -hmm. was a video. Yeah. Movie or video? I think there was, was a, a movie about it. So, I guess um, I was going through some in 2012 because I was like, 
If it oh. happens, it happens, oh, you know? Rough. But but now now I'm like, life is funny. No, that's so scary. Okay. Should we wait oh like 30 minutes now? Yeah. Or? Okay. So this is gonna take like, what, 30 minutes to cook? Oh, really? Do you want a B roll of it cooking? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> No, we shouldn't have added water. Oh my god, dude. Okay, 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 we gotta clean. Um, this is the remnants of the takdori tang sauce. All over the chair, all over the ground, all over the machine, everywhere! <laughs> but it looks good, yeah? Yeah. So we have fixed up the space a little bit. Not a lot of it, but a little bit. We might be sitting on takdori tang sauce right now. But uh, we're gonna be putting in this cheddar cheese. My mom doesn't do this. But this is what I call generational innovation. This is what I call ruining authentic cooking. Okay, then I guess I should tell you guys about this guy that traveled from the future. Oh, this yeah. one freaked me out a little bit and I wanted to nope out of my own pants. It was creepy. His what? name was Guo Feng Ling. Oh, I think I'm saying Mr. Mango sure? Butt. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, mm. but we're gonna call him Fang because that sounds really cool. Sounds like a time traveler in a movie. It sounds like he was, he was born to time travel. Now he said he was born in 2013. Can we eat soon? Yeah, I think it's it is about weird. Whatever. It is kind of melting. I'm ready. Are you ready? Should we try? Yeah, let's we gotta try. try. So try I'm gonna it. get a potato in here. This is a jalapeno. Okay, I'm gonna let that melt a little. Actually, here's a potato. Oh, I'm so excited. How is it? Oh my How's God. the flavor? Wanna cut this with mm. me? It's so good. We got a piece. Is it of better than your mom's? No, my mom's is better. What? I'll tell you why. How? Hers is more sticky. Ours is a bit liquidy. Let's try the f***ing noodles, shall we? Hold on, let me try this with maybe some carrot. Oh, I want to add then? some oh, my. ramen noodles in here, you know? The flavor is actually perfect. Really? And the chicken's so soft. Mm. I don't even have to bite. Mm. Would you say oh. this is better than your mom's factory tongue? Oh, I can't Ooh. say that. No. You can't? But this is pretty good. <laughs> Be honest. Is it better than your mama's tattori tongue? Nah, nah. Really? Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Fascinating. But, but it's who, pretty close. Okay, would you say your mom, who has the best cooking in our family out of the moms? Oh, the whole, every mom? Mm-hmm. 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 Well, I haven't really tried, uh, you know, aunts, but your mom is pretty good too. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Hmm. I don't know. It has to be one of my, uh, one of our moms. Wow. Huh. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. mm. The glass noodle. Oh my god, it's spicy. The cheese was a perfect addition. Honestly, I would have added more cheese. Yeah, I'm gonna try with. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. The Sorry. plop it made! Sorry. The fucking plop and everything! <laughs> I haven't had a chicken yet. I need to take a piece of chicken out. Wait, the skin it? just literally. Oh, it just, just fell apart. Yeah. The skin just oh. fell off. I don't know if I want the skin of that, but. Okay, mm. I gotta let it cool because I wanna grab it with my hand. Wow. Wow. Turn it down a little bit, maybe? Mm -hmm. How is it, guys? Bro. Mm. Mm. I'm so glad we tried the, we added the cheese. Oh my God, try the chicken. Mm. Ah, it's so hot. The spice is also just perfect too. Isn't spice amazing, babe? The jalapeno was uh, my idea. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's amazing. Okay, should I try a jalapeno? Next time, if we add some rice cakes and some freaking um eggs, mm. that's a tteokbokki. <laughs> oh my gosh, the carrot consistency is amazing. It just mm. runs through. The chicken just pulls apart. Okay, last bite, and then I'm getting into it. I'm sorry. Ugh. <laughs> mm. 
This is my favorite. It's a croissant toast. Let's try dipping it. I think this makes sense because mm. the sauce, no? The sauce is good. It's like a sweet spicy. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're onto something. Wow. 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 I think I know why now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, looks good. Oh my god. Right now, I like that more than the noodles. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Okay. Should we go for another mm -hmm. one? Mm-hmm. Wait, is there no, no more cheese? Mm. Wow. Do you believe in time look. travelers? Um, no. <laughs> I mean, cause April one, like we we all could have guessed that, mm -hmm. right? Like he just got lucky. Like, Imagine I tell you something's gonna happen November of twenty twenty two. Like you know something's gonna happen. Anything can happen. Mhm. Mm like my birthday is <laughs> happening. <laughs> so he said he was born in twenty thirty something. He so, time traveled with mm -hmm. the help of his friend from twenty fifty eight to twenty nineteen. So what does he do? You're like, does he go and try to win the lottery? No, he makes a Twitter account. Now, I know you wanna roll your eyes right now, but just hold on, just listen. He makes a Twitter account and starts posting a series of tweets. He says that Japan will win 27 medals in the next Olympics. Wait, but Olympics what? going on right now. This was before the Olympics went on. That's really specific. He posted this. 27 medals? 27 medals. And this is not only specific, but it's historical because the most amount of gold medals Japan has ever won before this was 16 gold medals. Okay, mm -hmm. and how many did Japan win? No way. He won? How many medals? I don't 27 know. medals. No way. Bro. This year? Bro, yeah. 27 medals. 27. Because I didn't keep track of it. They won well, 27. Yeah. No way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's not that's not even a guess. Like Yeah. It's crazy. Okay, I believe it. I believe <laughs> I believe that one because the number is so accurate. Yeah. How can you guess? That's hard. Yeah. That is hard. What? Wow. 27? Mm-hmm. And he said it when? Before the Olympics. 2018, yeah. you say? Yeah. That's like a couple years ago. Yeah. Before the Olympics. Yeah. Okay. And he said 27. Wow, that's that's pretty good. What else did, did this person predict? Is there more, a lot more? Yeah, so now people are starting to pay attention. I mean, prior to this, it was just looking at like one of those other Twitter accounts looking to get followers. Uh -huh. Now, people are listening. And he tweets that the stock market is going to crash in 2022. Guess what happens? Months later, the stock market crashes a record, not a record, but a pretty, yeah, pretty, but a pretty shocking, oh, 2020, sorry. But a pretty shocking mm. single day mm -hmm. drop of 10% due to COVID. That COVID, is yeah. a lot. And that day was called Black Monday. He tweeted I that the stock that market Monday. was gonna crash. <laughs> <laughs> and he tweeted this before COVID was a thing. So it wasn't like end of 2019 and people were like, this new virus outbreak. He uh -huh. didn't, guesstimate that. It was way before then. He guessed that the Prime Minister of Japan would officially resign in September of 2020. Guess what? He resigned September 16th, Bro. 2020. <laughs> Bro, this account is... Okay, you can't guess This that. account is owned by the Prime Minister of <laughs> Japan. Bro, it's creepy, no? It's wow. freaking creepy. I mean, how would you even... What would you even say that is? So far, this guy sounds... Uh, He's pretty accurate. The most legit. accurate out He of seems all. the most legit, right? He yeah. also makes predictions about when the Olympics would start. So this was during the time when, remember, nobody had any idea when the Olympics were actually going to start because of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. He guessed the date that it was going to start on. The exact date? Yeah. Oh, wait. The date changed. Mm-hmm. Remember how yeah. the Olympic, it, it was 2020? Yes. Yeah. He guessed the date that it would actually no happen. Way. And this was posted before it was announced that it was going to happen, like way before. Like how many years? Do you know? I think like close to a year. Like it was a while. It wasn't like, oh, someone was like, oh, but you probably read it on the news and then you just guessed a random date and you were lucky. It's kind of crazy. That's crazy. What the heck? No. We should have listened to him. People started asking him, why the hell are you back? Because that's a question. Like, if you're from 2058, like, are you here to tell us something? Are you here to do something? Why are yeah. you here? And he started giving us, a, like, are you just here to be an Olympics update person? Like, you care that much about the Olympics? So he said that they started working on a startup that makes time machines. And this startup actually relies on the time machine to get investments. Let me explain. 
how it works is if you want to put money in the time machine in 2058, you travel in the time machine back in the day to invest more money. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you go from the future to the past and you make money and you invest it into this time machine. It's startup. like I go back in time and invest oh, in Facebook. So, right? so what you can do is it can be 2018, you'll come here mm -hmm. and you invest all the money that you had. Mm -hmm. or, or you come here, make a lot of money and put all that money back into the time machine in the future. So you come here, make a, pun, a ton of money, go back to 2058. So you're like, how do you do that? Do you win a lottery? No, you don't because that'd be a little bit too obvious. He said that he came here after crowdfunding like close to 2 million US dollars. He got that from all of his friends, his neighbors. In they the actually future. started yeah, in, in the, the future, oh. close to 2, 2 million, million dollars. And he actually said that he used the dark web to do it too. So they, a bunch of people put in 2 point something million dollars. He came here in 2018 and bought 1,400 Ethereum. It was okay. like 2,800. 2, he said in 2058, the cost of one Ethereum, $2.1 million. By when? 2058. Now, don't take this as what? investing advice, okay? So Come on now. 2058-ish? This guy taking it as investing <laughs> advice. Uh, so he would, and I had to change. Then say, oh, no, man. I believe this guy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? He's been accurate like the past. Okay, let me explain, okay? I got to. You gotta what? Go all in. <laughs> <laughs> there must be a catch, right? Yeah, there's what gotta be. Come on. What's the He's catch? He's just here to pump Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it pump enough so he has to travel back and then pump it more. <laughs> Do you guys believe it? I believe it. So when he goes back to his future self, He's gonna have 2.9 trillion dollars. Shut up. Yeah. Which, by the way, I had to freaking turn my phone to get this number on the calculator. It's freaking massive. It sounds ridiculous, if I'm being honest with you. The whole thing sounds wild. But it does beg the question, if time travel is allowed, how much bigger does the gap between the wealthy and the not wealthy become? Mm -hmm. Because you still need the funds to go back in time to invest in things. And are there gonna be regulations? Is the SEC gonna get involved? Creepy, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how did he do this? Some people say he either got lucky. Okay, obviously you have the number one option, which is the guy did time travel and he's just telling us the truth. He doesn't really care about us. He's not warning us about earthquakes. He's just here flexing on his Ethereum growth and flexing on his life and just, you know, having some fun on Twitter. Maybe that's the truth. Some people said that he used the Twitter's future feature, which you don't have a future feature, but it means that you post something that only you can see and then you make it public later. But at that point, the date will still say the original post date. Mm -hmm. Meaning, he might have had a post for every single number of gold medals for Japan. Japan will win one gold medal at the Olympics, two gold medals, three, four, and so on and so forth till the day comes and he just unprivates the one that was correct. And that will have the day before <laughs> the Olympics took Hold place. On. On. Are you having trouble yeah. with the noodle? Some people think that he just got lucky and maybe he's just pumping Ethereum. Okay. I mean, but it's hard to say. How do you guess the 27 gold medal? Like, So he no. did say a lot of other specific things. He said that artificial intelligence singularity is coming, meaning super intelligent computers are going to have cognitive capacities beyond human capabilities. Do you know what that means? That means AI will upgrade itself and accelerate development at a rate that is incomprehensible to the human brain. That means AI will take over their own development and they're not gonna rely on humans to download the newest fucking software update. They're gonna do it themselves. They've surpassed humans. Um. They, he said that if this growth of AI happens, it's something that's exponential. So essentially what that means mm. is if AI singularity happens, the world as you know it is not gonna just be, oh, the world as we know it, but the future. But futuristic, maybe some flying cars. No, the world as you know it will cease to exist. It will be a completely new world. Whether that means humans are not involved and we are extinct, or it could even lead to a new type of species, not really species, but a new type of human experience where uh, brain-computer interfaces are merged, which means that the human brain is merged with a computer, a chip of sorts, like think of Neuralink, for example. And in the post-singularity world, someone without that computer chip in their brain is gonna be a weirdo. This is in 2050s? Yeah. That's... I can see that happening. 
Yeah, I can see it too. I but can see like it. once, because you know, at the speed of uh, technology is evolving, it's gonna go very, very fast. Which I'm intrigued to know what are your thoughts on Neuralink, guys, or like putting a computer chip in your head. Listen, I know the freedom fighters are gonna come out here and say, freedom, I wanna control my thoughts. I agree. I think it's so scary to have a chip in your head and imagine you could, someone could download every waking thought, conscious and unconscious. That would be yeah. incredibly dangerous. Even in the true crime world, it would be safer if it worked properly, but nothing ever works that properly, right? Yeah. But I mean, I think it's fascinating to think about. I think it was, like, let's say, like, that happens. Let's mm -hmm. just say everybody started to use Neuralink or everybody start to integrate your brain with a chip and you become like half computer, half whatever. I'm just thinking like it's gonna be a world of whole new sets of uh, problems problem that we're fighting yeah. for. Oh, yeah. Like it will be like, that's the other day I was saying, right? Imagine me and Stephanie can read each other's mind yeah. 24 seven. That's that can't good. be good. That's, not good. that's not good. Now imagine that in like a courtroom. Oof. Actually, I guess that's good. In the courtroom. No, because but, people yeah. will say you will always need privacy. I don't care what it is. Have you ha ever had times that people say you can't even trust your own memory? Or, you perceive mm -hmm. things in your own views and eyes. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's true. Mm, like false true. confessions? Yeah. Or have you even heard of intrusive thoughts? Have you ever thought of getting hacked? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine your brain get hacked. Yeah. And someone plant oh, fake just memories, like a virus. but not even exactly. just fake memories, because your brain can control your motor movements. You're right. Or exactly. what if they change the yeah. chip where they implant like new memories, and you yeah. forget your old great memories? Exactly. Yo. Yo, he said. I mean, he also said that there's going to be an ideological movement to counter artificial intelligence, whose whole belief is that the collective wisdom of mankind is better than artificial intelligence. So the experiences, the collective wisdom of mankind in general, I don't know, okay? That's what they said. Huh, okay. They also said that resi residential estates in the suburbs are going to be popular in 2058 because either people teleport to work or they don't can go to work. It's remote. Oh, wow. Remote teleport work. to work. Remote. Yeah. We're already yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah, we're already there. Holy so this one, I don't know if it's that wild. How do like you teleport wild. to work? I would like to know. Who knows? Maybe it's that box thing I saw. Oh, maybe like a hologram. Yeah. Like you're not really oh, there, but you're, you're there. Yeah. Oh. Like VR, but way more advanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so cool. He also said, if you want to go buy some, postage stamps are super rare and collectible. Mm -hmm. Stamps? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad has a huge collection of those. He's going to be a trillionaire. Well, he's going to be dead by then. We're going to be trillionaires. <laughs> wow. Kidding. I'm just kidding. That's so cool. he also said in the future, the structure of educational marriage is going to be a problem. And I think that this is something that people pointed out already to this day. So back in the day when women had no rights and like nothing else, uh, we were expected to like just be at home no matter how intelligent we are because a lot of the times we were more intelligent. I'm kidding. <coughs> oh yeah, bless you. So anyways, Easy. you would be home and the husband would be working. So if the husband has a college degree, then your kid lives in a very very specific like socioeconomic status mm -hmm. but now with the rise of dual income households college educated women really only marry college educated men so now with their dual income households which are typically higher than high school educated men and high school educated women who are together it's gonna cause this huge economic disparity that there's like no way to fix it because you can't force someone to marry someone but their kids are gonna be exponentially faster and it's only going to Nice. essentially accelerate all of this because this kid is going to grow up with two college educated parents they're going to have a very specific you know criteria of mm -hmm. living and learning and a specific socioeconomic status that is most likely going to get them into a college mm -hmm. and then they're going to only seek out other college educated partners okay. so it, like the divide is going to grow big and big and bigger which like don't come at me at this i didn't graduate college so you know what i mean That's anyways in 2058, the price for a cup of ramen will be about $2 after tax. Which I'm sorry, I feel like that sounds cheaper than it is now. I yeah, think cheaper than it does. Yeah. He makes a lot of political guesses, which I thought were fascinating. He said in the future though, your home toilets will detect your health condition. Because you know how you always poop in a bag when yeah. the doctors want to know something? Oh. Well, every time you poop, it'll automatically analyze it, That's... send you results, and notify That's your cool. family doctor. I feel like they could have done that now. Exactly. It's like the times that people were saying, like, remember back in the days, everyone was saying, like, one day your fridge is gonna tell you what to eat. What to eat. 
So your fridge is like smart, saying, "Okay, now go buy some milk." Or you will order milks by itself.、Mm. It will just come to your house. Your、mm-hmm. fridge will automatically order items for you because they know、so、you order eggs every three weeks, for example. Now there's only three eggs left. It will automatically order eggs. Or like、right? on the screen, it says, "Here's what killing. Here's what's killing you." And just all the foods that you're eating all the time. Imagine even loads huge, itself. I feel like that's like already that's possible. Yeah, with today's technology,、yeah. there just needs someone who. But I think you know. I wonder if there's who's、uh, available, who's、yeah. uh, who's interested, who's ambitious, who has like perm hair and、uh, <laughs> who has all his money in Ethereum now. <laughs> That would be amazing. The but, fridge thing.、Right? See, but I I get also people have qualms about the freedom. And usually I'm on that side too, but this one, if it's for your overall what if, health, what if yeah, it, it enhances your health,、yeah. save your time, ta- save you time. Yeah,、uh-huh. you don't have to go to grocery store anymore. That's true. Like it just does all of that for you. Just、and、big it, data. You have balanced meals. Yeah. Do people care about? Do you care about your personal data on what you eat? No. <laughs> <laughs> Like personal data, like people can see, right? Yeah, you can see it. What do you think you... I'm posting on this channel? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think my personal data? Yeah, you can see what whatever you want. You can even see my poop. Should I start a poop Instagram?、Oh. I just story my poop. <laughs> Listen, it could all be a very healthy community. He also said that in 2058, it will be difficult to obtain non-toxic seafood. So non-toxic seafood is going to be an ultra luxury. More than a luxury, it is now, which、that、seafood means, is quite. All、luxurious. right, go save your lobsters. <laughs> That means、yeah. we've been like what freaking killing the environment so bad. Yeah. That all the fish are poisoned. I can see that. He said in 2058, Japan and Singapore are also trying to ba- build a space elevator. It's not complete as of now, but what,、uh, what does that even mean? Like a, it's an elevator to space. Goes to the space. Yeah. That's kind of cool. He said, That's crazy. Yeah. He said flying cars are a thing, but it's limited to emergency vehicles. See, that's the thing. Like people have been talking about flying car like for 2000, like two thousand, two thousand for like decades. Yeah, nothing. Someone asked how much Bitcoin is in twenty fifty eight, and I'll end it with this. And this is not investment advice. In fact, it is the opposite of investment advice. It's just a random guy on Twitter without even a profile picture. For all we know, he could be a heavy investor in crypto, just trying to pump it. He said one Bitcoin in twenty fifty eight will be worth six point five million dollars. Listen, you can go on his like past tweets. A lot of people have like translated them in different languages on、um, Reddit. There's a lot of political stuff on there. Like, if you were interested in maybe even the relations between the United States, China, India, Japan, it's all in there. So he I mean, actually tweeted a lot. I don't know what to、lot. do with those.、So. Me either. Like, what am I gonna do? Call up the president? Like, <laughs> y'all need to get it together. I mean, I saw this thing on Twitter. They said y'all were beefing. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments. Make sure to check out Fetch linked in the description. Use my code BIS so that you can get three thousand points. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.